Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Sealed Throne of Aldrain Edition. Alright, well we opened some pretty nice cards. Bone Crusher Giant in red. Ayara, pretty heavy commitment to black, but if we can make it work it's a powerful card. Charming Prince, a fine two drop. Got a worthy knight. A murderous rider. And then Wicked Wolf in green. So some powerful cards in a lot of different colors. So we'll see uh, how the rest of our pool looks like. So we'll uh, go color by color, I guess. White doesn't seem very deep. Two Fairy Guide Mothers, 1-1 one, one Flyer for one. It's not a bad card, like the added adventure definitely makes a card a lot better. And the 1-1 one, one Flyer, if you're an aggressive deck with other ways to get in damage, is still serviceable. We've got Outflank as a cheap removal spell, if we have enough creatures in play. Charming Prince, of course. Glass Casket, Salt Removal Spell. Silver Flame Squire, 2 mana, 2 1. This one is the instant speed combo trick, plus 2 plus 2, and untap. We've got the Worthy Knights. Fortifying Provisions, adding a bit of toughness. Not the most impressive card, but I could see playing this in some decks. Bartered Cow, not the most impressive. And then Price Griffin, a fine evasive creature at 5 mana. So overall, white's not too deep, so it seems unlikely that I'll play white unless I end up with a ton of knights that makes the worthy knights worth it. But we do have some individually powerful cards between the prince, the casket, and the worthy knight. In blue we've got Mystic Sanctuary, powerful land if we've got a lot of good instants and sorceries to get back. Witching Well, decent uh, cards, bit of card selection early and card advantage later. Animating Fairy is also very good with any food tokens and other artifacts we can animate, and then still a 3 mana 2 2 flyer isn't bad either. Charm Sleep, probably one of the best blue commons as just a good removal spell. Queen of Ice is also pretty decent. 3 mana 2 3. When it deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, so pretty annoying to uh, play against. And then the adventure is just a 2 mana version of the ability, so that's also pretty decent. We've got Tomb Raider, nice enabler for the draw 2 deck. Just a good evasive creature. You're always going to play this in a blue deck. The River Turtle, I'm still not sold on. The Vantress Paladin, if we're heavy blue, could be decent. A 3 3 flyer for 4 mana is a fine uh, card. 4 mana 2 2 flyer, not so much. So we do need to be pretty heavy blue. And then the scavengers as a top end card to bounce something. Bit of interaction is decent too. Alright, so blue's got some tools. Also not the deepest, but yeah. Like a witching well, fairy, sleep, double queen, tomb raider. All those cards are very good. And then paladin based on how deep we are in blue. Scavengers as a curve topper. So it's got a bit of everything. And yeah, I could see playing blue if... Uh, the rest of our pool wants us to be. In black we've got double eye collector. I don't think this card's amazing. Has a bit of self mill or mill for those particular synergies. But black is going to be a lot less interested in a 1-1 one -one flyer than white is with the guide mother. Lash of thorns as a combo trick. Plus two plus one isn't much. So unless your creature has a ton of toughness your creature might still die in uh, combat, which is not great for a combat trick, which is supposed to save your creature. But the death touch means that you're probably going to kill whatever uh, is blocking your creature, potentially even multiple creatures. So it plays well with high toughness creatures on your side. Then we've got Spectre's Shriek, probably more of a sideboard card. I don't think I'm main decking this, unless we somehow expect there to be a lot of black decks. And I've heard from various people that black is one of the better colors in sealed for Throne of Eldraine. So if that's the case then a card like Spectre Shriek does get a bit better and you could potentially main deck it. But uh, we're playing best of one so I don't know if I wanna really go for it here. 
All right, let's take a look at our next page where we have Forever Young. Nice way to refuel in the late game for the black decks. They're usually pretty grindy, usually have a lot of creatures. So a nice way to make sure you don't uh, end up uh, drawing too many lands in the late game. We've got Order of the Midnight, also very good. The 2-2 flyer can block, so wants to be in a bit more of an aggressive deck, but the Adventure Half is great in a grindy deck. So I guess the way to evaluate this is great if you're aggressive, but otherwise it's just like you get a free 2-2 flyer attached to your adventure that returns a creature from the graveyard. A Reef Soul, very solid removal spell too. Power 3 or less can even kill some 4-drops, some 5-drops. So despite only costing 2 mana, you're often going to be trading uh, up on mana from the opponent. Smith and Swordmaster is uh, okay if we've got enough knights, could play well with our worthy knights. 2-1 lifelink for 2, if there aren't too many 1-1 one -one tokens or 1-3s, then this can get some damage in. Ayara has a lot of text, but the bottom line is that we want to be heavy black and have a lot of black creatures to potentially sacrifice, so plays well with cards like Order of the Midnight, Forever Young that can recycle some of our black creatures, and uh, other cheap creatures with maybe some Enter the Battlefield abilities. Bell of the Brawls, also solid. 3 mana, 3 2 menace is already a fine card, and even has some knight synergy. So, yeah, maybe Black White Knights could be a way to build this deck, since we seem to have a lot of knight synergies. Lost Legion, 2 3, that's Christ 2, fine 3 drop. Bit of card selection, we've got a Murder Strider, of course. Pretty good incentive to be black as well, as this is one of the best rares in the set. Bake into a Pie, also one of the best commons in the set. So our black looks uh, pretty stacked. Lockthwain Paladin, if we're going to be heavy black, as a 4-3 uh, with Menace. And of course gets better the more removal we have to clear a path for it. Uh, Wicked Guardian, if we have a lot of 3 toughness creatures, gets better. Uh, do we have a lot of those in black? So the Legion, Ayara, a Murderous Rider. Yeah, could be okay. The Barrow Witches also seems great if we're going to have a lot of Knights. Sadly, can't get back the Murder Rider since this goes on the bottom if it dies. But if we somehow mill the Murder Rider, I guess we could get it back. And then Reaper of Night, a fine curve topper if we don't have much at 6 or 7. So yeah, black looks very deep and I would be surprised if I did not end up playing black in the sealed pool. Take a look at red. Barge in. Plus 2, plus 2, but has to be an attacking creature, so it can be used defensively. Yeah, not so sure about this one, but I guess if you need a, a combo trick in an aggressive deck, this'll do. Crystal Slipper can also be fine in a more aggressive deck. Fling, not a big fan of the card, but this would be the type of card that I wouldn't mind sideboarding in against a removal-heavy deck to, like, sack my creature and still get some value. Of course, better the bigger creatures we can potentially sacrifice to maybe close out the game. Seven Dwarves as a one-off, not too impressive, just a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, but, you know, sometimes you'll need a 2-mana two 2-2 -two and you'll play it. Bonecrusher Giant, of course, is great. Ratcap Raiders, not uh, quite sure about this one yet. Tapping a creature is a pretty big cost to give this plus 1, plus 1 and trample, since then you can't block with that creature, you can't attack with that creature, so you somehow need some, like, cheap, expendable creatures that you don't care about too much. So I guess it's, this would play well with, like, a Fairy Guide Mother, that you can play early and then keep using for the raiders. A 4-3 Trampler for 3 is very powerful. It's just like how often can you make this into a 4-3 Trampler? And I'm not quite sure about that one yet. Slaying Fire is pretty decent, even without the Adamant. 3 damage for 3 mana and the speed is great. So very powerful card. And then Embereth Paladin. So this could be a 5-2 Haste with enough red mana. Could represent a lot of damage. And then we've got an Ogre Errant, also some Knight Synergy, and Searing Barrage. So if we had the mana fixing, we could potentially make some sort of Mardu Knight deck happen. Maybe splashing a couple of these red cards, or maybe going red-black. It's possible that red-black is the way to go, and we can just not play white at all. Even though Worthy Knight is, of course, pretty powerful. We'll see. In green, we've got the Cabin. If we have enough Forests, I could see playing this. Innkeeper, of course, very powerful if we have enough adventure cards. The Hellbird, if we need a mana sink. 
tracker. Don't know how often we'll play this, but if we're aggressive and have plenty of forests to play this turn one, it does attack and block as a 2-2, so how bad can it be? And then the appetite with some food tokens could be a fine combat trick. The rider's also pretty decent if we have enough food. Return to nature, probably just a sideboard card. Giant opportunity could be a decent enabler for some of the food synergy cards, but it is definitely a synergy card, you're not going to play this without uh, a reason. But, you know, if we've got enough of those, like, riders, and I guess Wicked Wolf plays well with it, then it could be quite good. Spore Cap Spider if we need some blockers for flying creatures. Out Muscle, pretty good removal spell in green. The Adamant can definitely be quite relevant, since then it can potentially take care of an even bigger creature than you could normally. Tall as a Beanstalk, not a big fan. And then of course Wicked Wolf is amazing. And Double Wolf's Quarry, not the, not the biggest fan of this card. I could see this being okay in a very specific deck with a lot of food synergies or token synergies. But in general, spending 6 mana for some 1-1s one is not what you want to be doing. And then looking at our multicolor cards. The Commander is a solid knight for a black-white knight deck. And Drown in the Lock is very good if we can maybe enable it with some mill cards, but even without any mill cards, this is eventually going to become a solid removal spell or counter spell. Covetous Urge is also very good if we're heavy black. Even without a blue we could still potentially cast this. Improbable Alliance is also amazing if we can consistently trigger it. A Lock Dragon, 3-2 Flyer, yeah, it's okay. Elite Headhunter, 2-3 Menace, that can deal some damage if we sacrifice some creatures or artifacts. This is definitely more of a build-around card. We've got Wondermare for the green-white adventure deck. Ginger Brute can be okay if we have enough food synergies or if our deck is aggressive enough. Uh, the Drawbridge, if we need a blocker. This card's kind of tricky to evaluate since... Decks that want an 0-4 blocker and decks that want a haste ability are not always the same. But, uh, you know, both abilities are decent and an early blocker and then a way to give haste in a late game can be too bad. And the Broom could play well with some uh, sacrifice synergies. Scarecrow if we need some mana fixing. Weapon Rack, this is also an interesting card. Definitely a lot worse than uh, the card this is referencing, which is the one that put minus one, minus one counters on uh, opposing creatures. It's not amazing. Three counters is not that many. Maybe if you have a way to like bounce this so you can replay it and then keep uh, activating it. Not sure if there's a lot of cards that do that, but then it could be better. And then uh, Profit of the Pack if you need a random six drop. This can help you scry too, so bottom lands. So in conclusion, what are we working with? So the only exciting white cards are Prince, Casket, Worthy Knight, and I guess a griffin. Good blue cards. I'm just going to put all the good cards in a pile here. And then we can figure it out. So in black, I'll put one Forever Young, Order, Reef Soul, Swordmaster, Ayara, Bell, Legion, Rider, Bake, Paladin, Guardian, Barrow. In red we have Giants, Fire, and then I guess these three cards are potentially playable based on the context. In green we've got Innkeeper, although I didn't see a ton of adventure creatures, so we'll have to reevaluate that one. Tracker could be good. Like, I don't know if I want to play a card like Meryl Leaf Rider, and then put a card like Giant Opportunity in my deck just to make food tokens to enable the Rider. That seems medium, but like the Wicked Wolf by itself is good, Out Muscle is good. So green's not very deep. We've got Commander, Drown, Urge, ooh, Double Urge even. And then all these other multicolor cards are pretty good too, if we can cast them. Alright, so these are kind of the more exciting cards, I guess. Yeah, the second opportunity would make a 7-7, seven, seven, but you would need to draw both, and it's still two cards to make one 7-7 seven, seven token that might get bounced. So yeah, we're clearly playing black. 
And then the question is, what's my second color? I don't think it's going to be white, despite the Worthy Knights being quite good. So the reason to play white is I get these cards, which, you know, are all pretty good. I don't think green makes a ton of sense. And then blue would make it easier to cast maybe the Covetous Urge if we're blue-black. Uh, the Charm Sleep is a nice addition. Queen of Ice is okay. Animating Fairy. Don't know if we have a ton of artifacts to animate. So blue's okay. Mainly because of the Covetous Urge being easier to cast. And then I guess Drawn in the Lock would also be a nice addition. So blue has some potential. Uh, Improbable Alliance is probably not making it. I don't think I can splash since I didn't see a ton of mana fixing. So we are probably going to be a two-color deck. And then red gives us Giants. Slaying Fire. Barrage. Makes it easier to cast the Headhunter. And then we've got this Lock Dragon that may or may not be castable. The Ogre Errant could be okay. And I don't think the Paladin would end up being great since we're going to be heavy black. So reasons to play red, mainly the Giants, the Fire, and the Barrage. I think blue is better than red. Double Covetous Urge I think beats most of these other cards. I had a Griffin in white too. And I think my blue is better than my white as well. Yeah, Outflank is playable, but it's not exciting. Like if I'm looking at the exciting cards, this is kind of... Like, the Ogre Errant is also kind of medium. But these are the more exciting cards laid out. The Barrow Witches also gets better the more Knight synergies we have. How many Knights do I have in black? Order of Midnight is a Knight. Double Swordmaster. Bell is a Knight. Lost Legion is a Knight. Murder's Riders a Knight, but I guess we can't get it back with the Witches. Paladin is a Knight. So we seem to have enough knights for the witches to be good, even without needing a second color with a ton of knights. I think blue-black is going to be the best approach here. Like the Queen of Ice also plays well with my Wicked Guardian. Double Covetous Urge seems pretty decent. Charmed Sleep is another good removal spell. I've got to take a look at the Animating Fairy to make sure it's good enough, but Drowned in a Lock as a late-game removal spell seems okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go blue-black. So if we sort our deck by our expected curve, don't have many 2-drops. But I can always use the Queen of Ice's ability on 2. So the curve is pretty high. Can always play Order of Midnight on 2 as well. If we expect it to trade and then maybe get it back with the Barrow Witches. I'm currently at 41 cards, so I could still look at some other cards potentially. I could play a Moonlit Scavengers, although we don't have a ton of artifacts and uh, enchantments to trigger this. I have a Charmed Sleep. I have Witching Well if it's still in play by that point. Bake into a pie that makes a food token. So it's possible that the animating fairy is not good enough. Like a 3 mana 2 2 flyer with a little bit of upside is still fine, but it's possible my other 3 drops are just better. So that's a maybe. I seem to have enough knights for all the knight synergies to be worth it. Ayara seems okay. Since I can potentially get away with a very few islands in this deck, it's a little awkward with the charm sleep, but charm sleep is a late game play anyway. So even if I have, let's say, seven islands and cast this around turn six, turn seven, it's still a fine card. Am I playing Mystic Sanctuary? Maybe I should. Eh, three or more islands is probably not going to happen reliably enough. So I guess not. Don't think the Paladin's going to be great since we're heavy black. We're not aggressive enough for the Ginger Brutes and we don't care about food all that much. Don't need the Drawbridge, even though we are lacking two drops, perhaps. So yeah, just maybe cut the Animating Fairy and we've got a deck. Yeah, I can always cycle Forever Young for 2 mana, so... If we need to hit our land drops, I can always cycle it on 2 as well. I don't know if I want a second one, 
Because, like, if our hand is all forever young, then we're just going to spend mana doing nothing. And we're just going to get run over. But I think one's enough. Like, I have double Barrow Witches as well, which does something similar to the Forever Young. So I don't want infinite of that effect. The Order of the Midnight also reanimates creatures. So I think we would be overdoing it by playing both. And we've got a good chunk of removal between the Murder Strider, Bake into a Pie, Reef Soul, Drown in the Lock. And then Queen of Ice can also tap creatures down. We've got uh, Covetous Urge to maybe steal a creature out of the opponent's hand before they can cast it. And then the mana base is probably going to go at least 10 swamps, maybe even 11. Just makes it more difficult to cast a Charm Sleep on time. Probably 10-7. Yeah, this is probably fine. Well then, we somehow managed to draw three islands. I guess I'm not complaining since I can cast my Charm Sleep and will draw black mana eventually. But uh, Paladin's not looking too impressive. Alright, that plays well with our Queen of Ice. This is Sorcery, good to keep in mind. Up against Double Plains, Islands. Lonesome Unicorn makes a 2-2 token, later a 3-3 for 5. With Vigilance, I guess I just hard cast my Queen of Ice. Make sure I keep playing Swamps for the Paladin. And then I can two curve into Wicked Guardian. So this is a Knight for the Witches, opponent stuck on three. Could also mind rot my opponent, but seems a bit premature. So I guess if I want to play the Guardian, I could attack first. That way my opponent takes it, because if I deal two to the Queen, then they might trade. And I don't mind racing when my opponent's mana screwed. We'll see what we want to do next turn. Pathlighter, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two flyer. Alright, so that's pretty good with the uh, unicorn in a couple turns. Token attacks, I'll take it. Queen of Ice probably playing defense. The Wicked Guardian doesn't really have any great attacks. I'm going to start taking two from the Flyer. If these were Knights, I would be more willing to trade them off. So I'll start with the Witching Well. Probably want to keep one Swamp for the Paladin. So I can play that next turn. So I guess now I just Mind Rot my opponents. And then the plan is going to be Paladin into, hopefully, the Witches getting back Paladin. Take a bit of flying damage from the Pathlighter, but that's okay. Discards Prophet and Griffin. All right. And then if we can get this in play, that can also start pressuring them. All right, Owl's pretty good. Does it find anything? It doesn't. Just a 3-3 Flyer. Still pretty big threat. So now I have two options. I can play my Paladin or I can Charm Sleep the Owl. Just so I don't take infinite damage. Maybe I should have attacked with the Guardian last turn since it's probably going to end up trading for the Knight anyway. And then maybe I can start attacking with the Queen of Ice too. On the other hand, if they played a big crown creature, then maybe the Guardian could have traded for that instead. But given that they played a bunch of Flyers, the Guardian was maybe better off trading. Yeah, I guess I'll play the Paladin. Pay Adamants. And now I don't want to attack, so I can attack with both next turn, potentially. Make it more difficult for the opponent to block all the things. We'll see. Frogify my Paladin. Ayara's not bad. So this turned it into a blue creature, sadly. So I can sacrifice it to Ayara, but I guess I don't mind attacking with it. And then Charm Sleep plus Ayara should do just fine. So 
So yeah, if I made this trade earlier in the game, I could have maybe gotten in a few points of damage with the Queen of Ice in the meantime. I'm a land away from playing Reaper. Equal to the number of cards in hand. Draws the cards. And the removal's more expensive. Alright. So we still just need to deal with this 2-2 uh, flyer at the moment. Just gonna play my Reaper. Don't think I can attack. Say go. So this gains flying if the opponent has two or fewer cards in hand. They can play their Unicorn from Exile. Interesting that they decided to play a land, unless they're going to use it here. Alright, Secret Keeper to mill me. Don't mind. That's just fueling my Forever Young and the Witches. Seems like they were better off just holding land than that spell. And then uh, the Reaper wouldn't have gained flying. Ooh, Murderous Rider. That's a good draw. Let's see. So there's one Knight in the Graveyard too. Do I even have to kill the Pathlighter right now? Maybe I don't. And then I can just play the Witches, get back my Swordmaster, and then I can adventure this or play this. How many Knights do I have in play? This is a Frog. So not too many Knights in play, I guess. Right, we'll start by attacking with the Reaper. Yeah, Murderous Riders and Knights, but I'm not going to be able to get it in play and do this whole thing. I'm still draining with uh, IR as well here. So I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. Griffin, so now I can murder the Griffin to get in with the Reaper still. Does get a counter from the Pathlighter, but that's fine. So yeah, we should be able to take over the game thanks to the Reaper of Night flying over. Still have the Witching Well as well to draw more cards. And Forever Young to maybe get something back from the graveyard. Yeah, opponent's gonna keep back the Pathlighter. Not gonna sack anything. Lost Legion. A bit light on black mana. We were kind of unlucky to draw four islands. I guess I should attack. If my opponent double blocks, I can play this at instant speed. Didn't think I have any other attacks. And should I cast this now? There's nothing I really want to get back. Probably just sag the Witching Well, and I should probably do that now. Since I haven't played a land yet. Another Secret Keeper, alright. Still helping me out with my Forever Young. I guess I only have uh, 12 cards remaining, so they're getting somewhat close to milling me. But I should be able to just play two black creatures and attack for four and kill them. Don't think I sacrifice anything. So I'll attack first. Sure. Alright. So we kind of had to manage the flying creatures, but then we kind of got our card draw engines in play, and the Yara did a ton of work as well. Alright, this seems like a pretty fine hand. Just gonna make sure to play my Swamps first, so I can maybe play Ayara at some point.
Alright, Cauldron could kill my Ayara, so we'll try and bait out the Cauldron for something else. Yeah, Cauldron's not bad. It's a bit more efficient than previous versions we've seen in past limited sets. I could tap down a Witch with my Queen of Ice and get in. Don't know if that's quite worth it. I think I just play a Yara and then take it from there. I guess that dies to the Cauldron. Yeah, that's fine. I've got ways to get her back. And if my opponent's using the Cauldron, then there's a higher chance I get to grab something useful out of their hand with the uh, Urge. So Ayara down. Murder Shrider is a good one. I think I'm still liking the Urge. Alright, Bake into a Pie seems pretty good. Doom Foretold, that's a scary one. So a lot of powerful cards. So I don't care about the armor. The knight is kind of whatever. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to bake into a pie any creature anytime soon, so I guess I'll grab the Doom Foretold. And we'll uh, see what we want to do next turn, whether that's playing the Doom or just playing another Urge. Opponent tries to hit their land drops and fails. So what happens when I play the Doom Foretold right now? Opponent has to sack their Witch. Then it's my turn, I sack my Swordmaster, which I don't care about. Then it's their turn, they probably have like the Foulmire Knight to sacrifice. Then it's my turn, I probably don't have anything to sacrifice. If I cast another Covetous Urge. And then that's it. So it's okay, but not amazing. Could Covetous Urge the Reaper. Since now we've hit a couple more land drops, so it's looking more tempting. I think I like that. Ooh, another bacon to a pie. Well, those are gonna be pretty good. But I think I still take the Reaper. And then we just make them discard some of those pies with the Reaper. Yeah, if they bake my Swordmaster into a pie, I'm not too upset, I don't think. I could Doom Foretold, so what happens then? Opponent sacks Witch, they could bake my Swordmaster, and then the Doom Foretold in my turn will fizzle, but I'll have made them sacrifice a Witch at least, and made them use a, a Bake on a Swordmaster. Food tokens are, are tokens, so they can be sacrificed to the Doom Foretold. I can just Mind Rot my opponents. Um, that's not bad. They discard probably Lost Legion and uh, Shining Armor. I'll make him do it now that we, they have all spells in hand. I could also Queen of Ice step this down and then attack, but I think I can wait. Not in a hurry. Yeah, we get access to the creature half of the adventure as well. That's fine. So the, the pies plus a witch will add up to quite a bit of damage eventually. Step one is probably doing this. And then I will attack, we'll see. All right, they do bake into pie the swordmaster, that's fine. Not gonna murder Strider the witch. They did not use a witch in response. I'll just play the queen, I guess. Yeah, this is a weird card to play with and against. Since we're not really breaking the symmetry all that well. Opponent's got a bunch of sack fodder in play. So now if I were to trade these, then the doom gets the witch. Yeah, I agree that Doom Foretold doesn't seem amazing. But that's also because we didn't really build around it and we stole it from our opponents. 
Yeah, I don't really mind if they kill Bell as opposed to the Reaper, I think. So we'll have to sack our own Doom Foretold to itself. They can sack one more pie on the way out. But you know, as the dust settles, our opponent has five lands in play, we have eight. We still have a Reaper in exile and a Murder Strider in hand. So we're definitely ahead, but not by a super wide margin. But we did get rid of two pretty premium removal spells. So that's also important to note. Yeah, order, that's a good one. And a cottage, get back a creature. Yeah, opponent's kind of doing it. Playing Reaper seems like a good place to start. Not sure why they're not attacking since this can block. Alright, that's a good one. I guess now that I have a bake into a pie, I might as well ride her first just to get the 2 3 lifelink in play. So I'll kill the witch. So our opponent can gain six more life from their food tokens. I can gain a bit of life with a rider and my own food token potentially. So I don't hate baking the, the knight here so my rider can keep connecting. Seems okay in the spots. Just wanna press my uh, advantage here while I'm ahead. Alright. Ooh, wow. Opponent had a third bake into a pie. That's a lot of pies. I guess I should keep playing out my lands, because... I have some more card draw effects like the Witching Well in my deck. Alright, so we're still winning this race. I don't have much use for my food token in play, so should I sack it now? Since I didn't uh, keep the enchanting fairy, I'll just sack it now. And there's got to be a knight in here somewhere. Bell. This is not a knight. This is a knight. I've got a knight in play, so this would drain for two. But Bell's probably still better. Opponent's gonna keep two food tokens in place, so they might have more food synergies in their deck. The knight doesn't really block anything. Alright. Up to 16 they go. That's a good one too. The adamant interface is pretty good. Makes it difficult to uh, misclick. A lifelink, indestructible. So they're not dead yet. Uh, let's see, I guess these both have menace. 
they can put Rider in front of something, give it a lifelink. I guess I'll draw first. And what do I deal damage to? Probably the Lockthwain Paladin. I guess they could double block it with the first striker and the rider to kill it. So it's kind of awkward to deal damage to something. Maybe I just deal damage to the murder strider and don't attack with it. A legion scry too, so that's not too useful. Can be too bad either way. But it's possible I should have dealt damage to the Lockthwain Paladin instead of the Rider. So they killed that one for free. They trade. And go to one. Oh, did they make it indestructible maybe? Two and zero so far. Let's keep it up. Well, we definitely won that game on the back of those early covetous urges as well, and uh, the sand seems pretty juicy. Eye collector. All right, I'm intrigued. So I guess I'm kind of forced to play my islands. So this is going to mill me for one as well. So I don't want to put a good card on top. So I guess islands and then I don't need a second island right away. And Gilded Goose. So they either drew the goose or drew the forest right now. Double eye collector, all right. So our opponent's got a plan. I could tap down a goose to delay the ramp. I could tap down eye collector to delay the milling. Because we don't have many flyers in our deck, so the, the mill could definitely add up. But it's also symmetrical, so you know. I think I tap down a goose still. Don't want to be staring down a, a four drop here. All right, well, 1-1 one, one flyers with equipment are a lot scarier than 1-1 one, one creatures without equipment. But it's only making a food token if they deal damage to a creature. So if it's just a flying creature hitting me, then it's not too bad. All right, this Forever Young is going to be pretty key for me not decking. So I'm going to keep that one close to the vest. I guess I can just play my Queen of Ice. Don't really want to murder anything. So yeah, as long as I can keep this until the late game, I should be able to avoid milling. Of course, I could just die to damage. Opponent's got a bunch of flyers in play. And they keep the eye collectors back. It's kind of surprising. Definitely like Paladin here over Pi. Can't take another hit from uh, the goose. Probably should have played my land first. In case they have a trick here, but I don't mind trading this for a trick. I could also urge now that they still have two cards in hand before they empty their hand. Is that better than playing Paladin? If we're trying to race, I want to get the Paladin play. I mean, this can be bad. So in hand, they have Epic Downfall. Exile target creature with convert mana cost 3 or greater. Alright, that would have killed my Paladin. And in their graveyard they have Servants, which I could use to draw a card. And an Eye Collector. Probably want to get the removal spell from their hand. Get a bit more value that way. So just gotta make sure we don't die. 
All right, so queen attacks, and then do we want a rider or do we want a pie? All right, another chump block, sure. So the downside of not using removal now is that they can maybe ramp instead, but they're probably attacking. Are there any haste creatures in black or green that matter in case they can re-equip the skewer? Probably not. I guess they could have like the one mana gingerbread man. So I should probably wait. And I wouldn't mind getting the rider in play just to start gaining a bit of life. So I think I'll end up using the rider. But I'll wait in case of a gingerbread hasty man. I think I want to play Rider just to play it safe. And then I could also order something back, but I guess there's no creatures to get back. Eh, I guess maybe Paladin's still better. Applies a bit more pressure. It's a three turn clock at the moment. Plenty of removal still in hand. Funeral kills that, that's fine. Now I can get it back with Order of the Midnights. And next turn go Paladin plus Order. Interesting. So they're splashing for something here, not sure what. So I can end of turn sack of food. Alright, well opponent uh, got in a bit of early damage with those 1-1 flyers and then pretty aggressively chump blocked with them so not sure what uh, kind of plan they were enacting but didn't work out for them all right so what are we working with here a ball of the brawl that can die and we can get back with the barrow witches missing blue mana for raider but the reapers also for mana play so i feel like this is good enough Uh oh, and that's a scary card. And green white too, so they're gonna have plenty of adventure creatures. I'm more than happy to trade off Bell for the Worthy Knights, given the chance. So we're definitely pretty far behind already. So we're gonna have to play catch up for the rest of the game. All right, the plot thickens. So I could murder Strider the Innkeeper right now. Is this a knight? Human soldier, so it doesn't even trigger the worthy knight. Could just play Bell, but then they play their soldier, draw cards. I feel like I just want to restrict the opponent's card advantage, even if that means taking a bit of a hit. Yeah, let's just murder this. And then uh, a 2-3 lifelink matches up quite well against these 2-2s. Two All but that also would have drawn a card with the innkeeper. So now I just need to find an answer for the 2-3 flyer maybe and then I'll be okay. See, all those uh, adventure creatures, we would have gotten buried by the innkeeper. 
Yeah, missing land drops is not great. So attacking isn't even all that amazing here, so I'm just gonna play Bell. Let's say go. The Reaper also gets a lot worse if the opponent's empty-handed. Alright, land 4. Doesn't really enable all that much. I'm happy making some uh, trades here. Yeah, I don't think they should attack with their 2-2. Alright, we figured it out. So yeah, Bell trading is just fine, since I can potentially get it back with the Witches. I can get back the Rider, since it goes on the bottom. So I think I just do this. But I really need a land here. Alright, well, can't win them all. So I'm taking 8 and I'm gaining 4, so I'm not that on board. I get to keep the rider. So you're saying there's a chance. So rider does not attack, has to stay back. I could Queen of Ice step down the flyer. I could play Tome Raider to chum block and maybe dig a bit deeper. I guess it's not good enough, like, if I tap this down, then they can still attack with everyone, I block 2, take 4, and I'm dead. So I, I need to draw with the Tome Raider and hit something cheap. Alright, that's not gonna do it. If I hit another Swordmaster, I could have survived, maybe. Ooh, opponent's gonna play it safe. So that gives us a, an extra turn. I could Queen of Ice tap something down and play it. But then I'm tapped out and opponent just attacks with everyone and... I would have two blockers and take uh, two damage and die. I don't think I have any outs in hand. It's gonna be a game. Alright, well. We probably would have been okay had we hit some land drops earlier, since we had the tools to kind of outgrind them with the double barrow witches. But so it goes. Alright, hand seems totally fine. Some early removal. A lifelinker to maybe get a few hits with. And then a bigger removal spell. Alright, that's gonna... It's gonna stop my Swordmaster in its tracks. It doesn't line up all that well against the 1-3. Now I could still play it, and then opponent can't really afford to attack me. I could decide to Reef Soul the Curious Spare to get in. It's probably still okay. And should I play Swamp or Island? If I play Island, then I could draw another Island and go Witching Well plus use the Queen's ability. If I draw Ayara, then I might be able to play her turn 3. I guess I don't have an Ayara in hand yet, so I'll do this. Alright, sure. 
seems like a good deal for me. Let's get in for two. Bottom both. And I've got a ton of options for next turn. Can attack into the Carver, could keep Swordmaster back. Now with the Lost Legion, I probably just want to play that over Queen to set up my future draws. Which seems great, with two knights in play. Oh no, return to nature main deck to kill my witching well, that's kind of rude. I could reef soul the curious pair, could just play queen of ice. Reef souling the curious pair isn't horrible since that just sets up my barrow witches pretty well, and then I can still play the queen. But yeah, losing the Witching Well is definitely gonna hurt our late game a little bit. So hopefully we can find some more of our card draw effects. Nah, don't really care about that. Ooh, Covetous Urge, that's a great pickup. So let me start by attacking. It's probably better to Urge over uh, Witches right now, even though the board presence from the Witches wouldn't be bad. I could urge first, but they might play around a trick now, whereas they wouldn't if I tap out. So it's kind of close. Don't really mind if they use a trick here, if they had one. I guess if they have a trick, I could steal it and then cast it. But then our opponent also knows about it, so... I guess there's reasons to do both. Opponent does block after... Some pause. Double foreboding fruits. Don't mind... Getting that. Sir Conrad's also very good. Although we do have a bake into a pie at the ready. So opponent's got a pretty stacked hand actually. Like if my opponent spends time casting some foreboding fruits, how much life do they have? 12. Is that good or bad for me? Feels like I just take the Sir Conrad's and leave them with the card draw. And then if they put the counters on the spider, I have to bake into a pie. Yeah, Conrad just milling someone out is a, a very real thing. Alright, so now the pie looks great. Although I guess if we pie, then I don't have an answer for the tree folk. But they also need a land before they can play the tree folk. And Conrad can also attack into it. I'll just pie. And I don't have any high synergies. So I'm fine sacking the food token here. So now I've got a bunch of options. So in the graveyard I have just a Swordmaster as a knight to return with the Witches. Could just play Sir Conrad. Could play Tome Raider to start flying over. Yeah, I'll just play Conrad, it's more mana efficient. This is also a knight, so next turn I could play the Witches, get the uh, Swordmaster and then drain the opponent for a bunch. I could also just start activating Conrad in the hopes of milling over something useful I can get back with the Witches. Yeah, the Witches will also drain for one with Conrad in play, that's good to point out. Eh, yeah, opponent's completely tapped out, they probably could have waited. I'd, I wouldn't mind trading Conrad for the Tree Folk. Yeah, I could consider attacking with Hall, that's what I'm kind of contemplating here. And I don't hit it. Eh, 
All right, well, opponent just scoops it up. Maybe a little bit premature, but uh, I'll take it. All right, so we're four and one. Let's keep it up. And looks okay. All right, those seem pretty good. Can I just keep both? Maybe look for land four for the urge over the order. Yeah, maybe keeping orders a little, a little bit greedy. I might miss my land drop otherwise. Don't think I cycled this quite yet. All right. Just play the queen seems fine. Uh, yeah, don't want to attack into the queen. To urge or to paladin? I mean, I guess a 4-3 mana gets double blocked. So it doesn't even do all that much. Yeah, I guess I have an urge for urge. Alright, well, the owl is definitely a scary one. True love's kiss. So many main deck disenchants. Maybe our opponents are onto something. Uh, this is fine. So I guess the owl is the scariest. Sure. There goes our well. Our deck actually doesn't have many targets for the True Love's Kiss. It's just a well, like one food token from the bacon to a pie, and that's about it. So, kind of unfortunate that we had the well in play. But I guess the owl also could have died to the kiss, so they could have potentially held this. But I don't mind getting the flyer out there. Since the paladin, again, just gets double blocked, so it doesn't really do much. Oh yeah, we also have the sleep enchantment, that's right. All right, so we're not in great shape, but also not in terrible shape. Like, we've got a flyer they have to deal with. They don't really have an immediate way to get through on the ground. A rider in hand too, to potentially solve some problems. And that's a good draw. I could take a hit from the unicorn. I could play Paladin first to just trade, but it is better to play a Yara first to get the drain effect from Paladin entering the battlefield. Yeah, I'll play a Yara first. I don't want to trade my Owl for the Unicorn, so I'm okay attacking. And then taking three from Unicorn for now. So no triple white yet. Opponent can gain quite a bit of life between the Linden and the Rally. So we're not immediately going to be able to outrace them here, but that's fine. And I guess Paladin is okay here. Trade for the Unicorn, potentially. Outflank. Alright. So there's nothing I can do about it if I Rider. They still have four creatures. Didn't get to cast it with Adamant at least, so they didn't gain any life. Next turn, I'll have... It's the option of Lost Legion. I could Forever Young get back my Paladin, assuming it trades here. So eventually I'll need to find some evasive creatures to get in for damage. We've got the Reaper that flies. That could be a way out. So I could Legion plus Forever Young. What am I getting back? It's not nothing too exciting at the moment, since I can only get back creatures. So I think I'll hold on to the young and just play the Legion for now. All 
No, bottom both. Not really interested in sacking the Legion quite yet. Alright, maybe now I am. Just to help me find more action. Opponent has presumably spells or maybe islands in hand. Yeah, that's a good one to be able to keep up. Alright, so there we go. Draw the Lost Legion. So right now, they have quite a few cars in the graveyard. Bottom of lands. Probably still fine to draw the Paladin. All right, so I've got a counter spell slash removal spell in hand and a rider as another removal spell, but no current way of really breaking through on the ground. Provisions is not bad with this many tokens. Although it doesn't really let them attack. And we're slowly draining them out with Ayara. Although they can also gain a bit of life back with the food tokens, so... It's probably not a great uh, long-term plan. Ooh, Castle Ventress, so... Opponent's gonna start scrying. So their draw steps on average are gonna be better than ours. So the late game might favor them here. Gotta find some of our nice two-for-ones. Urge, we've got the two witches that can, back, can get back a knight that I can sack to Ayara. Those would be good draws. I could consider attacking with a Paladin, hoping they just like double block and I get to Murder Strider one of them. Don't think that's a great plan, because they probably just like triple or quadruple block, and then I just end up trading Paladin for like a venerable knight and a token, which isn't great. So I think I'm just gonna wait here, be patient, and hope uh, I draw something useful. Don't think I quite want to sack my Lost Legion to the Ayara just to get one card deeper, because I also need some blockers back. So yeah, five cards in Graveyard for the Drown in the Lock. Keeps two cards on top. They also didn't upkeep the Castle activation. Can definitely upkeep it before your draw step to improve your draw step. Alright, I guess now I'm sacking the Legion since I can always Queen of Ice. Could also Queen of Ice, tap something down to get an attack in with the Paladin, potentially. How does that look like? I'm gonna keep my removal for opposing flying creatures. Or other bombs that we can't handle otherwise. Just gonna hang back. But yeah. Just waiting for maybe a witch to get the paladin back, maybe another covetous urge. Tap down my 4 3, sure. So I've got a, a boar stall here, but my opponent does have Castle Ventress, we do not. Alright, it's a good pickup. Alright, 
Ooh, that's a good one. Do I want to counter that? Two tokens that both get one extra toughness is pretty good. And then the 4-4, four, four, that's essentially a 4-5. Yeah, I think I'm countering that. Too much stuff for me to deal with. Opponent is down to one card in hand, so the second Covetous Urge, I guess, would get something back from the graveyard at this point. So I could trade Guardian, or I could double block with a Queen and trade a Queen. I guess I'll hang on to the Guardian. I've got the Rider in case of a combo trick. Alright, that gives us a win condition, even if it's uh, kind of slow. I'll still take it. I guess we do have some double blue cards in the deck. Alright, win condition established. Opponent's basically at 16, so we're probably gonna deck before this kills them, but you know. So your opponent should definitely put a stop on their upkeep now that they have this much mana, so they can scry before taking their draw step with the castle. Alright, got another removal spell lined up. No need to use it now. Opponent's got 18 cards remaining. 2 or 16. Alright, well now Banner, that's kind of an issue. Now uh, they assembled uh, a Voltron here, provisions plus Banner to get plus one plus one to all their creatures. I guess this is only the white creatures, so the, the Queen of Ice is still only a 2-4. But yeah, that starts adding up. So we can still probably make some decent blocks here, so I don't know if they get to attack. Alright, Tome Raider probably still gets in there. Might not even be worth it at this point. I would rather Murderous Rider the Linden as opposed to Charmed Sleep, so we also get rid of the ability. But instant speed on the Rider is pretty nice. So I think I'll just say go for now. So our opponent's got 17 cards remaining, we have 15. Did we bottom any lands? We did. So 12, 15. So we might have two lands left in the deck. So mostly action. Charming Prince could flicker something. Does it do anything? Might just be scry 3 or gain 3. That's fine. So yeah, these 3-3s uh, three, three start adding up. I can't really keep blocking them forever. But I'm glad my opponent's not attacking me. Yeah, that's a good draw. I did use my Forever Young already, so I don't have that as kind of mill insurance. But I do have some more Graveyard Recursion. It's definitely possible I should keep the Raider back for a double block somewhere. But my opponent hasn't shown me that they're willing to attack. So... I guess I'm happy attacking with Raider. Looks like they forgot to scry. Alright, there we go. That's some action. So I could steal their Owl again. Although there's no artifact or enchantment I can hope to hit. Uh, does a carriage do anything for me? It's not amazing. Could get... Uh, True Love's Kiss, and destroy one of their artifacts or enchantments. So we've got some options. I guess I'll start by casting it in case I have something in hand I want to steal. Another Rally. And that's going to gain them a ton of life too. 
So I'm not sure if I can win the game in time. But now the Anthem effects are even scarier, so I feel like I need to get the True Love's Kiss to destroy the banner. Like the Owl could potentially get there, but there are 23 now. And Linden can gain them a ton of life too if they start racing. But I'm not sure how I'm supposed to actually, like, win the game. Just want to see what I draw here, but I could have potentially waited. Well, my anti-mill card is uh, Forever Young, and that's gone. Don't know if I have another way to prevent milling. Well, we've got plenty of removal, that's for sure. Doesn't matter if I get the rider out there. Maybe it does. Witches can get something back. Any knights to return. I guess a lost legion. Might be able to get some trades. And then get back maybe like a Bell of the Brawl or a Paladin. But again, I don't want to race if they have a Linden in play, so I've got to be pretty careful here too. Yeah, the, the provisions makes attacking into these tokens less appealing. I think i got to wait for my Reaper to fly over and kill them. Like, the Reaper can be the last card in my deck, basically, so I get a couple of turns of attacking with my Reaper, potentially. There's Reaper. The fact that uh, the Rider goes on the bottom of my library. Let's see, how does that work out then? Because I still need the, the Rider to end up dead. So if I sack it to a Yara, that draws me a card. Because I don't have another sack outlet. Yeah, like, I can sacrifice it and draw it. But I still have my draw step drawing me a card as well. So I don't think one rider is enough to get there. So yeah, I don't think that really solves the issue here. But we can hope to get there with the flyers. Probably should play the rider, but I want to keep up Bacon to Pie just in case. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. So now what? I can sack it to a Yara. But it's not a knight, so I can't get it back with the witches, number two. I guess I still have the Order of the Midnight to get it back, so I, I guess we still have a chance here. So taking a look at my library, I have Order, followed by four unknowns and then four lands. Not sure what those four unknowns are. There's got to be another witches in there. And I think another couple of those uh, two one knights... The one that drains equal to the number of knights in play, so that could help me end the game. So we still have a shot here. At some point I'll have to think about killing Linden so they don't start gaining a ton of life. Because again, the charm sleep is not really a solution. Also, we fizzled the giant killer when we sacked our own creature so they didn't get the creature half of the adventure. So maybe I should kill Linden as soon as I can here. Because once they realize I'm gonna start out racing them, they might get a big attack in that gains them just enough life to survive. But I guess I still have eight cards remaining, so I'll be okay. So 
So return Reaper. Play Reaper. And then I could still bake Linden. Yeah, maybe I should do that now. Or play the order first. I guess they don't have any great attacks at the moment, so maybe I can afford to wait a turn. Because if they suicide attack their entire team now, they would end up losing everything and I could potentially still get there. Well, probably gonna have to kill that. Or at least tap it down with a charm sleep. Alright, that's an exciting draw. So how many knights do I have? One, two, three, four. And this would be five. So can I kill them? If I drain them for five, they go to nine. I can hit them for five, six, seven if I bake as well. We're getting very close. So I guess what I want to do here is sleep the Archon. I guess I'll have to pay for my flyers to attack. And probably bake the Linden. So they can gain life and then I can set up lethal for next turn. So they're at 6. I guess when I play this I also drain them for 1 with IR, so I might have lethal anyway, so let's just double check here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that should be game. Alright, just in time. That was a grindy game. All right, five and one. So I need one more win to get our gems back. Let's go for it. All right, on the play, fine hands. Maybe a few too many islands compared to swamps. Provisions. I'm happy if the Swordmaster trades because I have the Witches in hand. Alright, let's get that out of the way. Cauldron can kill the Queen of Ice. And a Ginger Brute on defense. Right, let's offer the trades and then play the Witches. I guess I'll order back the Queen now. Sounds okay. And it's probably better to play the order as opposed to the queen. Can use the queen's ability to maybe tap something down. And it's going to be harder for the opponent to block my uh, flyer. Alright. That's a good answer for it. Because witches plus order is also a nice combo. Just keep looping your witches with your order of the midnight. Well, that's not going to end well for them.
All right, so what do we want to do? I don't have to bake this into a pie right away. I can just tap it down for a while. Yeah, I think I like that. Attack. Tap it down. Reveal Swordmaster. Play Swordmaster. Could just big the paladin. I'm at 21, so I don't really care if the ginger brute maybe gets to attack me for a turn. They're probably gonna have to keep it on defense anyway. And getting in for four seems relevant. They are essentially at 12 here thanks to the food token. They can also sack the ginger brute, so I guess that's the downside of not killing it now is that they could tap and sacrifice it later if I try and kill it. I think I should get in for four. Shepherd to bounce it. Right, I still get to get in for four. But uh, that did fizzle my bacon to a pie, so I also don't get the uh, food token. Nothing I want to get back with Forever Young. I think I hold on to it. Right, could be in a bit of trouble here. We'll see. That's gonna bail me out. So they decided not to play the Shepherd. I'm not sure why. I guess they want to sack the food. So it's kind of weird how I keep not killing the Ginger Brute, but that might be the play here. Just kill the Paladin, get in for four, gain four, and then put a Queen of Ice in play. That can also block the Ginger Brute potentially. Sadly, can't get back the Murder Strider with the Witches, that would be a bit too good. So they didn't even sack the food token, which is kind of surprising. Now what? I could attack with everyone. They probably don't block my Queen with the Ginger Brutes. And then I can get back the Swordmaster with my Barrow Witches. It's probably fine. They can also sack the Ginger Brute to gain life, but I'm pretty happy if they do that. So those trade, and I get in for two, they're forced to sack the food first. So they go up to four, take two down to two. So now do I want to play the Witches right now? to get back the Swordmaster, because the Swordmaster would only put them to one here, so it doesn't force them to sack the, the Ginger Brute, but it does put the Witches in play. So it might be better off just playing the Lockthwain Paladin at that point, which is lethal by itself, and then next turn I can do the Witches plus um, Swordmaster thing. So we'll Adamant the Paladin. And I'll need a second blocker or some life gain or removal spell here. Basically anything keeps him alive, but then I might force him to sack the Ginger Brute just by revealing the Swordmaster, which is a pretty good deal. So I think I want to do that first. Although, what happens if my opponent had removal in hand? Then I reveal Swordmaster. I only have one knight in play and they're still not for forced to sack the Ginger Brute. So maybe I should attack first to figure out what it is they're holding. And then I can always play a Rider as an extra knight to make sure they are forced to sack the Ginger Brute. Now if they have a Baked into a Pie, they can also gain life, so things get a bit messy, but... I would rather get back the Paladin, I guess, with the Witches at that point, if it's lethal by itself. We'll see what happens. Alright, that's a win in my book. And there's still that to the Witches plus a Swordmaster here.
All right, sweet. So our knights, graveyard recursion synergies definitely playing out quite nicely here. All right, six and one made our jumps back, so it's all gravy from here. And we've got a totally serviceable opening hand. I wouldn't mind drawing a land four with Urge and Reaper in hand, but I've got some good early plays. Make sure we play our Swamps first, because of all the Adamant and Triple Black cards in our deck. Black Whites. Don't think I Reef Soul that quite yet. Maybe eventually. Alright, Mardu. And a Knight of the Keep. That's okay. So I could kind of trade some damage with uh, Bell of the Brawl and a Knight. But my deck is pretty good in the late game, so I feel like I just want to preserve my life total and avoid trading damage. So I think I'll just play Queen of Ice to try and trade for the Knight of the Keep. And then this uh, Harvest Fear and this Covetous Urge are both going to be pretty effective at destroying the opponent's hand. Steel Claw Lance. Alright. That upgrades the Knight of the Keep quite significantly. But now I can get the last two cards in their hands with Harvest Fear potentially. Yeah, that seems okay. Alright, that's some pretty good ones. Although they couldn't cast any of them, strangely enough. And uh, no point in attacking. Eh, I guess... I guess I should attack, because then this will be tapped, and then maybe next turn I can... hit them, and this gains flying anyway, so I can block the gargoyle. And we're at 8, so you know, gotta be careful here. But now this can destroy a creature with convert mana cost 3 or, or 2 or less, so if I put one more card in the graveyard. So what I can do is Reef Soul, the Gargoyle, and then Drown the Knight. That seems fine. Do I need to Drown the Knight now? Probably doesn't hurt. But of course, the lance is still gonna stay in place. If they have more knights, this could be pretty scary. So we'll see. So I can start uh, gaining a bit of life with Ayara. I could cover this urge to see what's up. I guess that's probably okay. So in their hands, they have Sir Allen and Trapped in a Tower. So these are both okay. Which one do I prefer? Uh, I guess they can't cast Sir Allen yet, whereas they can cast the Trapped, so maybe I just take the Trapped. It is a Knight, so it is good with Bell. I don't know. I guess I'll just take the Threat here. There's probably less that can go wrong if I take Sir Allen. And I'm not gonna reveal my Swordmaster yet. Yeah, that is true, the Trapped in the Tower is more flexible. But if I take all their Threats, then... They can't kill me, so that's also good. Ayara can only sacrifice black creatures, so I can't sack Sir Allen to it, but they might play the Trapped in the Tower on something else first, which is kind of the hope. I guess I don't mind if they use this on Ayara itself. So how about I go Ayara into Swordmaster without revealing, just to put an extra creature in play, gain some more life. Seems okay. Is it better than going Bell plus Swordmaster? Probably. So our opponent's down to 10, we're up to 10. 
they might have to pull the trigger on that removal spell, but then Sir Alan could maybe do some damage. I guess it does take away activated abilities, but Ayara would still drain the opponent for one whenever we play a black creature. So while I couldn't sacrifice stuff anymore, Ayara would still be pretty effective. Alright, a hasty Ambreth Paladin just as a 4-1, so no adamant. Opponent's got some uh, pretty greedy color requirements here. A red adamant, the knight, bake into a pie. Definitely stretching their mana base. So we've got 6 mana available, opponent's at 10. I feel like I can't go wrong with baking here. And then have a food token at the ready. And they need two removal spells, essentially. And since we don't have any food synergies, I'm happy sacking the token end of turn. Alright, opponent packs it in. Alright, so pretty decent run with our black-blue deck here. Losing a game to being stuck on lands, which can happen, but that's also part of best of one. Like, sometimes your opponent will be mana screwed, sometimes you'll be mana screwed or flooded. And there's not uh, the best of three to help you adjust for variance, but instead you're just playing more games in total. So if you get a bit unlucky, you could have a bit of misfortune in the first couple games even if your deck is potentially capable of going the distance. So hopefully one day we'll get best of three seals, but until then, we'll uh, keep playing best of one. Let's crack some packs. A Black Lands Paragon. So let's pretend this is our pack one, pick one in draft. What do we take? Paragon's okay, but not amazing, like... It's an okay to drop, but it's not a bomb. Um, the Lock Dragon kind of commits us pretty heavily to a two-color pair. Can potentially still play it outside of blue-red, but it's not going to be amazing there. But that's probably the best card in the pack if we can cast it. Uh, Paladin's okay too. Tree Folks, okay if you've got some adventure synergies. Uh, Ginger Brute has some cute synergies too, so... A lot of uh, different reasonable cards. I think I would... Like, the, the Paragon is the most flexible pick in that it can go into any black deck, even if you're not having knights. This is still fine, since you can flash this in, target itself, and be used as kind of an ambush viper. But the Log Dragon maybe has more upside if you can get the blue-red deck. Alright, I'll take whatever the best Mythic is in the set. Don't know if that's one of the Planeswalkers. Garruk is probably pretty decent. Uh, not sure if there's anything that competes with it. I guess like the the White Giant with a board wipe into a 7-7 is pretty good too. Oko is decent too. A lot of powerful Mythics in the set for limited. Questing Beast is okay too, yeah. Wicked Wolf is also up there in terms of power level for rares. So definitely taking that, but the Carriage is also a nice first pick since it's colorless, so it can go into any deck. And the power level is quite high. Uh, the Smasher is okay if you're red-green. Nothing else too exciting. And this is a decent mana sink for the late game. All the castles are pretty decent and limited, especially the blue one and the white one are probably the best ones. Uh, Epic Downfall is also very efficient removal for just two mana. So that's also a great card. The Spinning Wheel, also an excellent first pick as a colorless card that fixes your mana, ramps you, and then the ability in the late game, kind of like an expensive IC manipulator, still decent. And uh, some okay commons too here in the cauldron and the fruit. And even a griffin. Maybe the secret keeper if there's a great mill deck out there. So pretty powerful pack. So this is probably between the top three cards here. Castle maybe the better late game tool. And it's a lance. It's always nice when your lance can do stuff. Spinning wheel 
the most flexible since it goes into any deck. Epic Downfall, kind of the most efficient spell, so yeah, not sure which I would take here. They're all pretty good. But yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.